Let's face it, connections can sometimes be difficult for the young. So you can imagine that some might be tempted to, quite literally, make some of their very own. Imagine it, a friend who's there just for you, who will never leave you, never betray you, and always look after your best intentions and guard your secrets. Now imagine that such a creature feels betrayed, ignored, or even, heaven help you, hostile. For today, we're introducing a class collaboration from some actual students, presented by Reddit user SnooHobbies7109. This is the Cult of Forgotten Friends. When I was little, I had an imaginary friend. She was a young girl who wore an old-fashioned dress and shiny black shoes and her long, dark hair tied up in pigtails. Her name was Cupcake Catherine. No lie, with a K in the beginning of Cupcake. I didn't make that up. Cupcake Catherine was really funny about calling her the right thing and spelling it the right way. Anyway, um, Cupcake Catherine was a fun imaginary friend. We were a lot alike, liking the same stuff like singing, drawing, reading books, and of course, eating cupcakes. I mean, who doesn't love that stuff, right? She and I were best friends. She tucked into bed next to me at night and hugged me so I didn't have nightmares. She went to school with me so that I always felt brave and no one picked on me. We played every game together and she would hug me if I was sad and we even loved to play little tricks on my parents. All of my friends at school had imaginary friends back then too. I couldn't see theirs and they couldn't see Cupcake Catherine, but I always thought that it was so neat that everyone had this special friend that belonged all to them. Once I asked Cupcake Catherine if she could see the other imaginary friends, but she just giggled and then ran away on the playground. She could be like that sometimes. I kind of liked it about her. She was a little mysterious. When I was about six, a strange thing happened. My hair began to turn purple, but only in parts. By the time the transition was finished, I had a large giraffe-shaped purple blob in my long brown hair. Now, it's not the worst thing in the world that could happen, and in fact, I really like my weird purple hair now. But back then, it felt like the end of the world to be different. Cupcake Catherine was such a good friend when that happened, always sticking by me, always supporting me, and I thought that we'd surely be best friends forever. But then, when I was seven, I went to a slumber party. It was actually the party of a girl in my class who I did not know that well. It turned out she wasn't very nice. When I mentioned my friend Cupcake Catherine, she made fun of me mercilessly in front of everybody and told me that imaginary friends were for babies. That was the first time it occurred to me that not everybody knew someone like Cupcake Catherine, and I will never forget watching her that evening while the girl from class teased me. Cupcake Catherine stood in the corner Shoulders heaving, eyes piercing, face drawn into a terrible frown. Then she glitched. No, seriously, she wavered and blinked just like a television screen or a video game when they don't work right. Cupcake Catherine wavered momentarily between her angry self and a new girl all together. One with long hair down to the floor, full of stars and swirls of pink and purple, and black, empty pits where her eyes should have been. I gasped and reared backwards, but Cupcake Catherine abruptly returned to normal, and everyone at the party laughed at me as I gaped 
into what appeared to them to be empty, thin air. At the time, though, most of my good friends still had their imaginary friends, and I simply avoided the mean girl from class after that party. However, it was when we were nine years old, this time at the slumber party of my very best friend, Kara, that the other girls kindly told me that imaginary friends weren't real and that nobody talked about them anymore. Once again, Cupcake Catherine stood nearby, glitching in between herself and that weird galaxy-haired girl. It wasn't until the next day at home, though, that the fight happened. One I will never forget. I told Cupcake Catherine that it was time for us to say goodbye. She glitched frantically, her face going pale and shadowy with fury. I explained that I loved her for all that she'd done for me, but it was just time to start growing up. She roared with rage at me, glitching all the while. I cried and I begged for her to calm down, but she just did the opposite. Before my very eyes, Cupcake Catherine morphed into this horrific beast. Her head swelled and fell away from her shoulders, bobbing on a spring as though she were an evil robot who'd fallen apart. Her face contorted and deformed in a fit of psychotic anger. I begged her to understand, but she cut me off, speaking in a monstrous voice. I am, I am not, not Cupcake cup 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 anymore. anymore. I am Killer, killer, killer Catherine, Catherine, and, and you, you will pay, pay for abandoning me. An eerie, distorted song lingered in the air like an old-fashioned toy winding down to its death. And then, Killer Catherine vanished into thin air. After that, I quickly convinced myself that Killer Catherine had never been real. I think it was the only way that I could really mentally cope with the idea of something like her existing in the universe. You know, pretending that she didn't. I couldn't deal with thinking that there was such a thing as an angry monster out there waiting to exact revenge upon me. So I told myself that my over-imaginative childhood brain had simply made the whole thing up. My life settled into a simple, quiet routine after that, but things in the town where I lived got weird for a while, and scary. There was an unfortunate rash of child deaths. Several children perished by suffocation. Medical examinations concluded that their lungs had simply stopped working, as if turned to stone. There were other weird deaths, too, gruesome ones. Some children were caught doing awful things, setting fires, hurting animals, stealing, fighting, all the while seeming not to be in control of their own minds or bodies. Still, other terrible deaths occurred. It's almost too horrible even to mention but it was axe murders. Murdered children. Some even suspected that the crazy kids who'd lost control of their own minds had somehow done the axe murders too. So, by the time I was 16, my town was quite different than it had been. My little brother, Freddy, unfortunately had a much different life than I had when I was little. Gone were the days of riding a bike alone in the driveway or being allowed to swing on the swing set in the backyard with fears of zombie kids or axe murders. Kids were typically kept under strict lock and key. And then, all of a sudden, when my brother was five years old, every single hair on his body fell out. At first, it was terribly alarming, but we quickly found out that it was a condition called alopecia, which simply means that you lose your hair. Some people only lose it in spots, some lose a little, some a lot. It's actually quite uncommon to lose every single hair, but that's just what happened 
with my brother. He took it hard at first, but soon adjusted to the change. One Saturday night, I had my best friends over for a sleepover. Late at night, a frightening conversation started. My best friend Kara asked me, Stephanie, do you, do you remember your imaginary friend? What was her name? Um, Cupcake something? Catherine. Cupcake Catherine. It was the first time that I had thought of Killer Catherine in years, and I shivered at the mention of her name. After a moment's hesitation, I admitted that yes, I did remember. Kara's face was very serious and pale. She nodded. I remember mine too. Her name was Galaxy Gina. Kara's eyes fluttered and she stared off into outer space. She was so nice for such a long time. She had very long hair all the way to the ground. It was pink and purple and filled with stars. A shiver raced up my spine and I gasped at the mention of a girl with stars in her hair. Kara continued. But then when when I started to want to stop believing in her, her eyes disappeared. They were just black holes where they used to be, and, and she did some wicked, wicked things. I could barely breathe. Like what? I whispered. Carol lowered her voice and leaned in closer to me. The other two girls there with us leaned in closer too. She stole people's hair, Kara said. She took the hair of other people to keep her own so long. Her voice dropped even quieter. It sort of freaked me out when Freddy lost all that hair, Kara admitted. And, and that's not all. She could steal people's breath, too. Freeze their lungs so that they couldn't breathe. Galaxy Gina's been gone a long time time, but it made me think of her when Freddy lost his hair. Our other friend, Lexi, began to cry. We put our arms around her and asked her what was wrong. Well, Lexi said with a trembling voice, now that you bring this up, it's something that I've been thinking of for a very long time. I had an imaginary friend too. And mine also got mad when I didn't want to believe in him anymore. He changed. He said his new name was Demonic Thomas, and he... Lexi shuddered and couldn't seem to go on. What? I prodded gently. What is it? She whispered in a jagged voice. He could control people's minds. We all gasped. Then... It was our other friend, Alice's turn to make a terrified confession. She was crying hard by the time it was her turn to speak. Mine got mad too. Before she went away, she said that she was... She was... Ashley Axe, Alice wailed. We all comforted one another until we calmed down. And then finally, they asked me about mine. I admitted how it had ended with Killer Catherine, but that I'd never seen her again. Unlike their imaginary friends, mine really had been gone all this time. We agreed to keep our secrets and to try and figure out a plan for how to stop the wayward childhood imaginary friends from, from their path of destruction. It was a week later when things really began to spiral out of control. Now, after it all, I wish I had done more. Told an adult, tried harder to stop our cult of imaginary friends, but I didn't, and now, I can never take that back. When I was walking by my brother's room, on the way to my own room to go to bed for the evening, I paused when I heard him talking quietly. No, not that one again. I don't like that story, he said. I paused to listen, thinking that our mom was maybe in there with him, but I didn't hear any reply. 
but Freddy giggled again. <laughs> All right, Freddy said, but your stories are strange, Catherine. I gasped and burst into the room, fully expecting to see my monster there. But the room was utterly empty except for my brother, who was sitting in the middle of the floor. I rushed in and dropped down next to him. Freddy, who are you talking to? I demanded, grabbing his shoulders and shaking them gently. He glanced behind me and then met my eyes. She says you know who I'm talking to, he said hesitantly. Don't, I said. Don't talk to her. You can't talk to her. Freddy's lip quivered. He glanced back over his shoulder again and replied in a very small voice. She says not to listen to you. I shook him again. Freddy, I mean it. Please, you have to listen to me. You can not talk to Catherine. Her name isn't really Cupcake Catherine anymore. She's lying to you. Her name is Killer Catherine. Big tears shined in Freddy's eyes. She doesn't like that. Freddy whispered, you have to go now. You can probably guess how this tale ends, but... I, I need to tell you anyway, because nobody else would ever believe me anyway, and I just have to get it off my chest. Please, please just believe me. Never forget your imaginary friends. Never pretend that they're not real. Freddy killed our parents. He killed them with an axe. Or so it seemed at the time. But you tell me, how does a five-year-old overcome two adults and kill them with an axe? He doesn't. That's not a thing. I know it, and you know it too. That was not my brother. Either he didn't do it, or he was under the control of something else. Something strong. Something terrible. My brother... My brother ended up in an asylum at only five years old. I ended up motherless, fatherless, and alone. But even that horror wasn't the end of it. After five more years in the asylum, my poor brother died. They called me to come in and collect his things. It seems he'd simply stopped breathing, as though his lungs had turned to stone. Heartbroken, I went to the asylum to collect his things. He had next to nothing, basically just an assortment of sketchbooks and charcoal pencils worn to nubs. Inside were scads of depictions of monsters. As I left Freddy's room, I turned back for one more look. And it's then that I saw them there, the girl with the galaxy hair, an angry boy, Shirley Demonic Thomas, a girl wielding an axe, Ashley axe, and Killer Catherine with her swollen, grotesque head bobbing on its rusty spring. Screaming, I turned and ran as fast as my legs would take me. So yes, for many, growing up is a painful process. Leave it to the world around us and the varying vicissitudes of life, society, and in this case, the supernatural, to make it torturous. Friends are precious, folks, so keep them close, even when they may be inconvenient. It's best for you, them, and for your future. Stay scary, my wildlings. Remember... Friends close and enemies closer, and make the most of your nights. <laughs>